I love to say good afternoon to everyone and uh, evening to those who are in their evening this particular time. And we want to also at the same time um, say welcome for joining us in our Sunday online service. I would like to also quickly remind those who have been following us that uh, we are continuing on the part two of the discussion that we began last week. And the idea of it is the Christian authority in times and in season like this. Today, I'm going to try and emphasize where the need to have authority comes from. Um, like I said last week, some people do have aversion to the idea of Christian authority just because of the abusive aspect uh, that goes with what Christians call authority. Nevertheless, I came to the conclusion that irrespective of what is happening, whether people abuse authority or not, the Christian needs to have authority because that is one of the things that we receive as adopted children into the kingdom of the Father. The need for authority as humans has always been an important aspect of humanity. Although man quickly lost that authority, yet the authority and dominion has always been an inseparable aspect of our nature. When the Lord God decided to make man, authority and dominion were in his God-given endowment. Mankind's design makes it imperative that he has dominion and authority, and the enemy has managed to keep a lot of saints in ignorance concerning their given rights. And some have rationalized away the use of their authority and dominion. Adam's ignorance to the reality of who he was cost him the loss of his life and the universe. Our authority and dominion are our wealth. When we are ignorant about our authority, we expose ourselves to a lot of pain here on this side of eternity. Let me read to you from the book of Psalms, something that has to do with the sad nature of how man lost his glory. This is what the psalmist says. It says, people, despite their wealth, do not endure. They are like the beasts that perish. And in some other translation, it says, people who have wealth but lack understanding are as beasts that perish. And that talks a lot about humanity. It talks a lot about what Adam and Eve lost. It talked about how we all fell along with him. And here we see the heart of God for man. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 to 31, the Lord God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kind, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Hear this, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that move on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit and seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it. I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw 
all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. It is interesting to see that the Lord God himself naturally, by the way of creation, built this authority into mankind. Whether we are Christians or not, God already put this in us. And, and I believe that that is what the psalmist saw when he was talking in Psalm 8. He said, Lord, our Lord, our ma how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. And when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hand. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea, all that swim the parts of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. If you look at the scriptures verses, one will definitely see the intention of our creator. And God was always for us to have authority and dominion. And, and this is important. This is the psalmist <clears throat> before the era of grace, excuse me, <clears throat> before we even had the ability to come closer to God as his children who are adopted into his kingdom. And we are seeing how the psalmist was able to see that God already gave man this phenomenal attribute to be able to have authority and dominion. Unfortunately, we lost that. And again, as Christian, the Lord Jesus redeemed and restored us and not only did we get the old authority that we lost, we are given the authorities now as children of God. And before I go deep into that, I would like to talk to us about the nature of our authority. Number one, our authority was supposed to be far-reaching. God wants our authority to go beyond a lot of spheres that we, we barely even scratch or touch. Here, this in, in Psalm 8, verse 5 to 7 said, You have made them a little lower than the angel and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hand. Now, hear this phrase. You put everything under their feet. Unfortunately, when you look around in, 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 the, in the economy of human or mankind, one of the things you see is that the system that man is supposed to rule and, and have dominion over actually rules over us. We, we idolize our cars, we idolize our houses, we idolize our culture, we idolize our principles, we actually, we idolize animals, we glorify animals. And the Bible tells us that God has given us rulership over the works of his hand. And he has put everything under our feet. One thing I would like to add here is this. There is a preacher who has since gone to the Lord, Miles Monroe. I mean, I do not know much of him, but I, I had one of his sermons. And one of the things he said is this. He said that the grave is the richest place on earth. He says the grave has so much wealth, yet it is a source of wealth that you can never tap or mine. And the reason he said that is that a lot of people never lived to the fullness of what God created them for. And so when they died, they died with the blessings, with the authority, with the dominion, with the, the, the unimaginable talent that God gave to them. And just before we go further, I think this is a, an opportunity for each and everyone to find out for ourselves. Are we living our lives to the fullest? So a lot of us are poor, not because God has declared that we should be poor. As children of God, the Bible says everything that God has, everything that Christ has belonged to us. Yet we are poor, not only poor in our economy, we are poor in our spirit, 
We are poor in, in our emotions. We are poor in our intuition only because we are not using our authority and dominion. And somebody is going to be hearing my sound this morning and saying, well, Pastor Tony, you don't know what I went through. I believe that a lot of the times, the reason why some of us do not use our authority and dominion is because we, we excuse our excuses. We, we tell ourselves that our excuses is so, is so important, whereas we, as children of God, we are supposed to push away the burden and the weight and just move on into the blessings that God has already given us the grace for. Number two, we were supposed to be efficient as the angels. If you read that verse, it said, we were made a little bit less than the angels. We were supposed to be efficient as the angels. Maybe not the angels, but as the angels. Number three, we were supposed to have glory and honor as kings, as queens around us. And it's sad that sometimes even those of us who call ourselves the children of the kingdom, part of the problem is that we become idolatrous people. We are bound by the desires we have. We are bound by our appetite. We are addicted to the things that literally we are supposed to suppress. Number four, situations were supposed to bow to us in our authority and dominion. The word says, you put everything under their feet. It depicts a, 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 a picture of something that is prostrated at the feet of a king. It is talking about the submission that a subject has before the king. In other words, God wants us to be like kings around here, not abusive, but to be able to take authority over the things that he has entrusted into our hands. When one understands this great position, then we can understand why the Satan is bent and is still bent on destroying the relationship between God and man. He knew that breaking the relationship between God and man will rob man of this glorious blessing. The scripture calls him our adversary because he opposes our authority. When we break rank with God, or we broke rank with God through disobedience, we lost not only our environment, but also our authority over the environment. Sadly, if the only thing that was lost was our environment and the control of it, it would have been bearable. But we lost more than that. We lost our freedom to be kings and queens. The Apostle Paul was describing this loss of freedom in, the, in describing the struggle that goes with the loss of freedom, hear him in chapter 7, beginning from verses uh, 14 to 19. It says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. I mean, just imagine that is an apostle lamenting. The reality here today, dear friend, is that not only did we lose the authority over environment or our environment, but more sadly, we lost the authority over ourselves. We see the apostle not mincing word as to the gravity of this rampage in our life. We cannot rule over others or situation when we do not have control over ourselves. When our human entity and the dynamics that are within us are in disarray, we cannot rule over others. It just will not happen. And this is a serious, serious message here. For a lot of us who want people to follow us, who want to direct other people, I believe that the place to really become a leader 
to other people is to subject yourself to authority, to lead yourself, put order in your life first. And, and if that does not happen, it will be very difficult to go ahead and try to be a leader to other people. But before we go too far, I must say that there is good news that the king and the lamb has won the victory over this battle. We are no longer bound. The chains have been broken. The victory is due to the shed blood of the king and our adoption into the beloved kingdom of God. Like any other skill, to be proficient in our authority and our ability to have dominion, we must learn and subject ourselves so that we can have mastery of it. And this takes us to the next question. Where does this authority that the Christian need comes from? This one is extremely important because if you miss it, you have missed it all. And, and I would like to emphasize that there are people who misunderstand courage for faith. Naturally, God gives everybody a portion of gift. Some people have faith, some people have courage, but our faith in Christ is a universal gift that we all have for those who follow Jesus Christ. But we cannot confuse that faith with saying, I am courageous. You can be courageous and not be a faithful person. And so many people have missed this aspect. And this is why it is extremely important for us today to find out, we've been talking about having authority. Where does this authority come from? The first thing to do about the source of our authority is to familiarize ourselves with the name of Jesus Christ. In the first place, our authority is in the name of Jesus. That's where the first thing comes from. Our authority comes from the name of Jesus. It does not come because we are courageous. It does not come because we have some financial advantage or some political position that gives us that authority. The authority that is really authentic comes only in the name of Jesus Christ. And for anybody to have this authority, you must belong to Jesus. You must familiarize yourselves with Jesus. And so many saints have not taken the time to familiarize with the name of Jesus. Yes, they hear it. Sometimes they even call on him but they have not made it their vocation to familiarize themselves with the name of Jesus Christ. The rule is simple. If you don't know him, you will not use his name. It's very important. So I, I just want to ask us as saints, if we are finding it impossible to express our authority and dominion as the children of God in our race as we run towards the gate of eternity. The first place that I would like to ask you is this. Are you familiar with the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ? Are you familiar with the fact that all that belongs to God and Jesus Christ belong to you? And ultimately, if I was judging you or analyzing you, this is how I will say it. If you are efficient in the way that you use your authority and dominion, then I can draw a conclusion. You are very much familiar with Jesus Christ. I will draw a conclusion that you are very much close to Jesus Christ. Now, this is important before we go to the second part of the conclusion. Part of the problem is this. We misunderstand our Christian culture as having a relationship with Jesus Naturally, if you are in a place where there is the rule of law, the tendency is to pretend that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But that's not true. The real test is this. Do you believe in the name of Jesus Christ? Are you familiar with Jesus Christ? Do you take advantage of the power and the freedom and the authority that the name of Jesus Christ gives to us? 
That's the key here. If you don't, then the second conclusion is very simple. You have a Christian culture, but you do not have an authentic Christian relationship. If you don't call upon the name of Jesus Christ in your time of need, in your time of freedom, what other names do you call upon? And I would like to emphasize this a little bit. So for those of us who claim to be Americans, who are in, a, in an economy that is alive, where there's rule of law, where there's security, where the technological uh, exploits are unbelievable, where you have everything. The tendency is to feel that because you have all this safety, you are doing well. But the real, the real answer to, your, to my question that I should ask you is this. How much do you depend on Jesus in the midst of the abundance that you have? Just think of it. How many times in the day do you call upon the name of Jesus? How many times in your day do you apply the name of Jesus? How many things do you apply the name or the authority that is in the name of Jesus? The culture is not enough. The authentic life of living as a disciple of Jesus Christ means you depend upon the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear what the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11 says. In your relationships with one another, have the same mind as Christ Jesus. I mean, that's a big deal. Verse 6. This Christ who is in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of his servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death and even the death on a cross. Verse 9 is the conclusion. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's unbelievable. Let's quickly just make a synthesis of what I just read. In the first place, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. A lot of the, the, the reasons why the Christian culture or the church has lost its ability to influence the marketplace or the world is this. The Christians do not take advantage of the power that is in the name of Jesus. We have forgotten that at that name, every knee, every tongue, principalities, dominion, sickness, diseases, on, on, on pleasant situation will bow when we apply the power that is in the name of Jesus. Actually, what we see today is that the church has sort of uh, trained the, the sheep in such a way not to live a faithful life. Because if you try to start saying, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and rebuke the confusion that is going on in the political arena in the United States, people will say, maybe we need to use just the vote. People will say that. Some people will say, maybe we need to use the courts. But that's not the truth. The Bible tells me that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every situation will bow. Well, I'm preparing for an interview. I have to just go back and read all the things I studied in college. And, and sometimes you don't have to know everything. Because at the name of Jesus, that power will bring you favor. Oh, well, I, I have a little bit of headache here. I need to call my doctor. Maybe you don't have to call your doctor. Maybe you need to start first with the name of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, I am not condemning all of these things that I have mentioned. All that I am simply saying is this. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And that name causes every situation here in heaven, up in heaven, and here on earth to bow when that name is applied. And except you as a saint familiarizes yourself with the power that is in the name of Jesus, you may be cheating yourself. Number two, there is authority in the name of Jesus. That's what we read. There is authority. I'll tell you this, and a lot of people may believe or may not believe, but this is the truth. I was in Africa, I think it would be about two years ago, because it's not this last trip. And uh, I was very thirsty because it was the dry season and I wanted to have some drinks. So I went to the shop where they sell drinks. But those of you who, who would know, in Africa, a lot of the house, all of the houses actually have burglary proofs on them. And uh, I went to the shop, I wanted to buy uh, this soft drink and I couldn't see anybody. So I tapped on the grid. Eventually somebody responded from the back of this burglar proof. So, but then they were slow in the way they wanted to serve me this drink. And typical of me, I looked the person in the eye and I said, are you all right? And she said, oh, I'm not feeling my best. I said, what do you have? I don't know, but this headache has just never left. I said, did you take some medicine? Yes. Did you treat for malaria? She said, yes. But just, just, just imagine what is going on. I'm behind the grid. She's on the other side. And I said, can I pray for you? I couldn't even reach out because it was not just greed. It also had mosquito mesh on it. So I said, in the name of Jesus, headache, leave this woman. Now, a lot of Americans may not have seen this. She went to the, hit the floor is the right word. And when she recovered, this was like, oh, the headache left. I didn't even have to touch this woman. And I asked myself this question this morning. How many of us or how many times do we take advantage of the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Even the weather will bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, the authority in the name of Jesus transcends both the heavens and the earthly realm. This is important. Somebody may say, okay, Pastor Tony, you're right. There's authority in the name of Jesus. But how do we deal with situations that seem so complicated? Well, the Bible says every knee, both here on earth and in heaven. What that passage is telling us is that the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ transcends every realm, both in heaven and on earth. When we apply the authority that is in the name of Jesus, the devil tumbles, the demons tumble, diseases fall, situations change. But it will never happen except you have already familiarized yourself with Jesus Christ and with the authority that is in his name. Isn't that fantastic? There is freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. In Galatians chapter 5, the apostle said, For freedom's sake did Jesus die. Jesus died for you and I to have freedom. And so because he died for you and I to have freedom, that freedom comes to us whenever we apply the name of Jesus Christ. There is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. There is victory in the name of Jesus Christ. There is redemption in the name of Jesus Christ. There is salvation and there is life. And I just want to ask this question before we go too far this morning. If these things that I have just enumerated are true, why do saints not apply the authority that is in the name of Jesus? I'll answer the question for myself. It's simple. We are disobedient. Christ said it simply to his disciples. If you love me, you will obey my commands. And one of the things that the, the devil has mastered is to put the Christian in this unending loop of disobedience. We, we do self-preservation. We run after ourselves. We run after what we want to gain. We pretend that we are Christians. On Sunday, we dress for the church. We behave like saints. But 
in reality, we are in a state of disconnect with this very same Jesus that we pretend that we worship. And I would like to just add before we go, we are losing, we have been cheated by Satan. When the Bible tells you and I that at the name of Jesus, we have authority. There, there is power, there is authority, there is victory, there is healing. Why will I not avail myself of this blessing? I think I will leave this for each one of you, wherever you are, all over the world, hearing the sound of my voice, to make this a food for thought. When you wake up in the morning, apply that name of Jesus. When you find yourself in the public, apply the name of Jesus. When, whatever situation, because at that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Let me just say a little bit more before we go further. Do you know what is so funny about blessings? Blessings, they are like antibiotics. When you are sick, you take antibiotics and it kills the bug. You don't even realize somebody is doing the job for you. That's the same like blessing. If you're born into a place like America, except you walk and bypass the very, call it a chain that blessings can become, you may never understand the joy of Christianity. A lot of us here in America, we don't understand. You will never understand, except you begin by faith to trust in the name of Jesus Christ. Because this is how you will know it. If you take yourself out of this economy and place yourself into other circumstances where there's no constant electricity, where you do not have a guarantee for health, where the medications you buy may be falsified, where you will not have clean water, where your cars will not run when you go to the mechanic, where life is in chaos, then you can understand that you have been truly blessed. But beyond that, if you find yourself in such circumstance, you have to ask yourself, how do people survive in this area? Do you know how? Faith in the name of Jesus Christ. For them, the name of Jesus Christ is not a name that you use occasionally. The authority in the name of Jesus Christ is not the name that you use when, when you feel hopeless. It is a name, an authority that you use as you take every breath of air into you. So for them, it is normal. And so I would like to just add this. Take advantage of the name of Jesus Christ. Take advantage of the authority that is in his name because the Lord has given us the grace to have it. The second thing. So I told you why. The first thing is this. Apply the authority that is in the name of Jesus. The next thing you need to do is to subscribe to that name because he has willingly given us the authority to use his name. So I use this word because it's what everybody uses now. When you watch somebody on YouTube and you are moved by it, what do you do? You click like, right? And you subscribe so you can see them again whenever they are online. Now, can you imagine if every saint clicks like for Jesus, subscribe for Jesus, what the world will look like? So this will tell you the state of your own Christianity. When you read your word, click like for Jesus and subscribe to it. You definitely will see the fruit. If you don't see the fruit, it's because you have not made it your vocation to subscribe to the name of Jesus Christ or like it. If you love me, you keep my commandments. Now, see what the, the writer Luke here says in chapter 10, verses 18 to 20. This is the Lord Jesus talking. So he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the 
power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Somebody would say, well, Pastor Tony, he was talking to his disciples. Well, aren't we disciples of Jesus? Well, somebody would say he was talking to the disciples in the Jewish era. Well, are we not the Israel of God? Whichever way we push it, the Lord said, I have given you authority. I have given you authority. This is so important for your work with Jesus. Because if you truly do a soul search, what comes to your mind every time that you need to solve a problem? What comes to your mind when you have a need? What comes to your mind when you feel like you are hemmed in? The first thing that comes to your mind will tell you what you subscribe to and what you like. I like the way he wrote this. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, he says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Isn't that something? In my name. I believe that some of the problems that we find in our economy and in the world today, they are due to the works of the devils. And a lot of people have become so medicated that literally a lot of us are zombies just walking the streets. And this is what Jesus said. He said, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions. And then the second thing he says, this is the sign that will follow those who believe in my name. They shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new, song, with new tongues. In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations or to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe shall be condemned. Again, these signs will accompany those who believe in me. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. In John chapter 14, verses 11 to 14, this is it. It says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe me on the evidence of the works themselves. Verily I tell you, this is what's interesting. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have done. He didn't say the apostles, he said whoever. And they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name. And I will do it. Wow. There's, there's, it's like a wrestling inside of my soul this morning. There's joy and there's sadness. There's sadness because I just see the children of God living as slaves when we should be living as prince and princess. I'm not trying to put anybody here in the sound of my voice on the spot this morning. But I know that majority of us, we have not used the authority that is in the name of Jesus. We have not used the authority of the name of Jesus to help our children. We have not used the authority that is in the name of Jesus to change our marriage situations. We have not used the authority that is in the name of Jesus to bring in our neighbors to Jesus. We have not used the authority that is in the name of Jesus to change the political situations. Because I tell you that at the name of Jesus, even the political system will bow. And I just want us to take a pause. Are we faithful children of the kingdom? 
Well, here you go again, Pastor Tony. Your sermon is always making people sad and think, if it makes you sad, be sad. So that you can take the authority that Jesus has died for and given to you and use it. Just use it. I'm not trying to make you sad. If you're not doing the right thing that the king expects from you, you should be sad. He gave you his name. He gave you his blood. You became his child. There's nothing to judge any other person for. It's just, could our environment be more different if we apply more the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ? I believe it will, ch it will change for better. It will change because by this name of Jesus Christ today, I believe that the doors that have been shut will open. I believe that diseases will lose their powers over us. I believe that demons will flee from us this morning. But we must be willing to apply the name of Jesus Christ and use that authority. I think as I round up this morning, there are just two serious messages that I would like you to see. I've seen how a lot of us, we follow people on the social media, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, just give it a name. I've seen how we go to the extent of making sure that we do not miss any contact with these people or this situation we like on the social media. We have Instagram, we have Insta, give me all the names, Insta crazy, Insta why, Insta group. We have everything to make sure that we are in tune. Right? Isn't, we even, what's that one that disappears after a while? Snapchat. Voice chat, video chat. We do not want to miss a bit. Why do we do that? Because we love what we are pursuing. You agree with me? If you don't love something, you won't make Instagram of it or whatever of it. It's because we love that thing. And the challenge that I'm trying to bring to the surface is this. If I ask you to place all your activity on the social media against the volume of your application of the name and the authority of Jesus, which one will be heavier? You know, I'm making you feel bad right now, wherever you are. Because your social media will weigh higher. And the conclusion is this. You're poor. <laughs> Because the name of Jesus makes us rich spiritually. As I round up, I really want to challenge us to the fact that we are called to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our spirit. If the love that you have for other things is higher than the love that you have for the king, then something is wrong then you are poor because you're not going to be take, able to take advantage of the blessings that goes with the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as we conclude this morning, if you've really understood my sermon, my teaching, whatever you want to call it, I think it's an opportunity to say, Lord, I want to reset my relationship with you, with your name. I want to use the true authority that you have purchased for me by your name. Wherever you are all over the world, I'd like to provoke you to take a step of faith. If anybody here this morning wants to say, Jesus, I want a reset with you. You know, there's something about faith. Faith doesn't exist if you think about it. If you desire it, it's still not faith. Faith comes alive only when you act on it. Do you get a picture? So anybody hearing the sound of my voice, if you are here this morning and you want to say, Jesus, you know, 
I've come to the conclusion. I have come to the conclusion that the amount of social activities that I have and likes and subscription are higher than the volume of my interaction with your authority and your name. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you didn't know, it's time to know now. Wherever you are all over the world, all I want to know is, do you want a reset? And if that is you, just go like this with your hand and put it down and we shall pray. Let us bow our heads. If you want a reset, I'd like to just see your hands. God bless those hands. God bless those hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we call upon the name of Jesus that is not hindered or feathered by anything, that is not restricted in any way. Father, by the authority that is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray today that you begin a reset for each and every one of us. I ask, first of all, Father, that you put a deep love in our heart for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let all the idolatrous bondage that is in our heart be broken today in Jesus' name. Put a deep love in our heart for you again. Cause us, Father, to walk in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, if any man and woman hearing my voice has never experienced the joy of the victory that is in your name. Father, today, cause them to begin to experience that. In your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus Christ, I have prayed. And those who love Jesus will say, Amen. God bless you. The service has come to an end. Let us share the grace together.